was a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric, for, for being such an incredible advocate for me and for women. Uh, and thank you to the board for placing this trust in me uh, and for the Committee of 70 team for their continued hard work and support. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to the League of Women Voters who are our volunteers today and where I was the president uh, of the board for a few years there. Uh, it's an honor to host this event and to have you all here. Just two years after electing our first female vice president, we have Sherelle Parker on the ballot this fall. Joanne, yes. <laughs> Joanna McClinton as the first female speaker of the PA House. Kim Ward as the first female president pro tem in the Senate. We have the first women to lead Allegheny County and the first female chief justice of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. And I could not, we can absolutely. And I could not be more honored or humbled to be the first woman to lead the Committee of 70 in nearly 120 years. Our leadership and government are changing. They're starting to look more like all of us, the people they represent. And that's why we have an opportunity and a responsibility to bring people closer to their government. That's how I see Committee of 70 having an even bigger impact in the coming years. The lar in the largest city and the largest swing state, we are regularly inundated with people telling us this is the most important election of our lifetime. Yes, that's true, of course, yes. Every election is tremendously important. Voting is the absolutely necessary step to creating any kind of change. And at 70, we want every eligible voter to vote, to be informed when they vote, and to vote with confidence. But while voting is necessary, it is not sufficient, not even close. We need to encourage people to get more active and engage with their local politics, not just in Philadelphia, but in every county across the Commonwealth. Without this engagement, we are breeding the voter apathy you have seen in our dwindling share of the voter turnout. Democracy works better when we earn and hold trust. Trust in local election officials, in the integrity of our systems, and in each other. The best way to build trust is to get involved and become part of the democratic process. To work toward a government that is transparent and as effective as possible. The recent LenFest poll showed that 45% of Philadelphians don't even know who their city council person is. And if you don't know who your representatives are, you've likely never asked them to provide the help your neighborhood needs or the services you and your family deserve. Government has little incentive to improve if they don't think the public is watching. 70 has been here to watch and we're gonna keep doing that. The news outlets led by these remarkable women you'll hear from later are here to watch. But we also must help bring people closer to their government, to empower them to watch, to learn, to be engaged and to hold their government accountable. People should expect more from their elected officials and they should understand what tools and leverage they gain when they vote. The Committee of 70 can and will continue to call out corruption and mismanagement, but it is much more effective if groups of citizens understand their power, how the system works, and demand better government. The Committee of 70 is here to bring about this revolution in citizenship and I am so grateful for your support and partnership in fulfilling this important mission. I'm also grateful to my mother who is here today. <laughs> she was my absolute first and best example of strong female leadership. And to my colleagues from the Forum of Executive Women who inspire me daily with their, their impressive leadership as well. Speaking of forum members and impressive women, I'd like to introduce Laura LaRosa, uh, our Mid-Atlantic president of our presenting sponsor, BNY Mellon, and a wonderful, long-serving board member of the Committee of 70.